Parma police tell us the 41 year old man parked in this parking lot. He walked himself into the lobby and he told officers he wanted to turn himself in for a crime he committed. When officers came out to the man's car, they found his child unresponsive. That 45 year old woman has burns all over her body. She is in critical condition. Neighbors tell me it sounded like a bomb went off. They say their home shook. They heard a loud boom. As you can see, crews are still working to clear the debris to be absolutely certain there was no one else left inside that home. Neighbors tell me they figured this land would be developed someday, but they're concerned that this road wouldn't be able to handle the traffic for the commercial development. So there used to be a vaccine for for Lyme disease, but that's been discontinued. So your best bet really is to wear insect repellent with DEET. Make sure it has that DEET. And yeah, it's safe for the kids. Small comes here once every couple of months to the site where Robert Godwin Sr. was killed. She tells me this is where she feels closest to him. Lamb says one of the biggest things he wants changed are the nameplates. He wants them to say council members instead of council man and council woman. The victim was shot right here in the city of Cleveland, but drove himself a mile away. He stopped just across the street from the city line into the city of Euclid. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five shots fired into this house. The scariest part, Jennifer's 13 year old son, was sitting right inside. The postal worker managed to get the woman's keys. He went to a neighbor and asked them to call 911. Hatch says it's possible for the drones to fall out of the sky. He says the way technology has advanced, it's pretty uncommon. Going door to door, showing the little boy's picture, hoping someone would know who he is. Well, this is the center of where the storm hit last night. You can actually see this tree that was snapped off. Now, Burger King workers tell me they can actually hear the tornado come up through this creek, jump over the street into that parking lot. Then it started throwing cars as if they were toys. Watch closely to the top left of your screen. There are two cars, both white, that will get swept up and spiraled by an EF1 tornado. The car on the left skids, slides, and is slammed onto its roof. The car on the right rolls, but lands back on its tires. My poor co-worker was outside, and she was like, I was holding on to the wall. You can see the whirling of the tornado whip through the parking lot. And all of a sudden, like there was just like all of our windows and doors blew open, and the lights started flickering, and then everything just shut down inside the Burger King. They took cover. It pretty much like went through the drive through. Here's another view. The light on the ceiling starts falling off and carts start blowing through the parking lot. There's a flash of light. Then you can see people start running through the parking lot. Watch this small child and their parent running for cover inside the grocery store. It lasted for like 30 to 45 seconds. Like it doesn't seem that long, but like when you're in here, it's a really long time. It took us by surprise because I mean, you hear the sirens, but you just never think it's going to hit in your area. As quickly as the twister blew through, it was gone. We were actually surprised because we had heard the sirens and we got the notice that the tornado was coming through or that there was a possible tornado. And then when we drove through, we were kind of surprised that it actually had touched down right here. Yeah, so the good news, even with the 90 mile per hour winds and carts blowing around, no one was hurt. Of course, they spent the day cleaning up today. There was some damage to the roof here at the Burger King. There's some siding missing, but they tell me, you know, as long as no one was hurt, everything is okay. Reporting live, Lacey Crisp, Cleveland 19 News. Most of us aren't working on our Halloween decorations in April, but then again, most of us aren't the Meyer family from Parma. They celebrate their favorite holiday the biggest way they know how. If you drive up and down Luelda Avenue in Parma, this is crazy. it's stop and go traffic at times. It was on Google. We were on we were... Pleasant Valley and now we're, we're yeah, Googling. Huh? Where is this place at? It's... Everyone wants to see. Steve, go over there. I'll take a picture. Nick Myers' latest Halloween decoration. That is an Imperial armored transporter for troops, we'll say. And it's from Empire Strikes Back. Seven years ago, Meyer and his family started the tradition of building a Halloween display in the front yard. Every year, this guy puts out amazing things. I love it. I encourage it. It gets bigger every year. I think I kind of liked the clowns we did one year. And last year, we did Friday the 13th Cabin is one of my favorites. This is it. Are you kidding me? I had to come here to see it for myself. It's just great. I love it. In case you were wondering, the at at is 19 feet tall. One neighbor tells me he thinks they should add a Chewbacca on top. Last year was pretty awesome and he pretty much topped it. You'd think some neighbors might not want to stare at a two-story Star Wars character for a few weeks, 
but you'd be wrong. No, um, this is our fourth year living next door to them, and we love it. People will continue to stop. Smile. To look. You get us? And take their picture. Do you know who this is? No, it's this is, uh, it's been nonstop since it's been up. Until the first week of November, when they take it down. But it's pretty popular. And then it's brainstorming time to find a theme for next year. Who knows what he's going to come up with for next year. <laughs> The Myers always have a big party for Halloween. You can tell it's their favorite holiday. They tell me they're going to put out a suggestion box for their creation for next year. Lacey Crisp, Cleveland 19 News. I had no idea he would message me later last night saying he was the suspect and police had him surrounded. Just before 9 o'clock Monday night, I got a tip police were surrounding a house for a possible suspect from the triple murder in North Royalton. Almost an hour later, I got a message from a man who was friends with the victim, a man who I tried to meet up with for an interview earlier that day. Here is part of our exchange. George Brinkman said to me, Valley Forge Drive, Brunswick, hostage situation, please come. Cops came for me. I'm barricaded. No lies. And I told him, get out of the house, hands up. I called Brunswick police and made sure they knew Brinkman was talking to me on Facebook Messenger. They told me to continue talking to him to encourage him to go to police. I said, can you tell me what happened? And he responded, I'm being blamed for Sue and her daughter's death. I had a broken hand since Friday. How could I control three adults with a broken hand? He messaged me from just before 10 until 3 a.m. and was taken into custody around 5.30 a.m. I tried to get him to talk to police. I said, please continue to talk to them. Please let me know if I can do anything. George responded, just let everyone know that I would never hurt Sue or the kids. I loved them too much. And just to be clear, when I asked him for an interview, I did not know that he was a suspect. We talked to dozens of people on Facebook like Brinkman every day for stories. Now, it was hard for me as a mom of two daughters when I realized I was talking to a man accused of killing a mom and her two daughters. It was an unnerving evening for me. Uh, unnerving for sure. Uh, great job keeping your composure in, in all of this. So I'm fascinated. The police said to go ahead and, and keep communicating with him as this was all going on. Yeah, he was responding to me. I don't know if he was responding to them, but they told me to keep encouraging him to talk to them, to try to go out of the house and leave with them so we could end peacefully. He was telling me later, like, goodbye, this is it. So mm -hmm. I was worried how it was going to end. I was glad to hear at 530 in the morning that he went peacefully. And again, at one point you told him, go out with your hands up, try to try to end this. Okay. Right. All right, very good. Lacey, Chris, great job. Yeah, I have been following this since the middle of January, and I just got my hands on these disciplinary reports. Two EMS personnel will have to serve a one-day, eight-hour suspension each after they refused to pick up a man who had been shot more than a dozen times. Please take me to the hospital. On January 14th, a man was shot more than a dozen times while sitting in a driveway near 188th and Pawnee. The victim was shot right here in the city of Cleveland, but drove himself a mile away. He stopped just across the street from the city line into the city of Euclid. They won't come because it's in your city. Even though it's our victim, they won't come. Euclid EMS was busy at a fire, and Cleveland EMS refused to send an ambulance. Unless we pick him up and scoop him to Euclid and then worry about it there. I mean, he yeah. needs to go to a hospital. Police officers on scene decided the man needed help right away, and they drove him to the hospital in their police car. According to public documents from a personnel hearing, emergency medical dispatcher Mai Ling Lam asked Sergeant Jewel Smith at the time, we don't go to Euclid, right? Sergeant Smith responded, no. According to the Emergency Medical Service General Order, the Division of Emergency Medical Service will dispatch an ambulance if an ambulance is available and if the total response time is 15 minutes or less. We went to EMS headquarters to get answers. This is all going through the press office, so contact Dan Williams at the press office and he can answer all your questions. The city's director of media relations, Dan Williams, sent me an email saying, as the people involved will have an opportunity to file a grievance, we will not be interviewing on this topic at this time. For now, both the dispatcher and sergeant have been suspended for a one-day or eight-hour shift. And I spoke with the victim's girlfriend today. She's upset and tells me she thinks they should serve longer suspensions. She says she hates to think what could have happened if police had waited for EMS to arrive. Getting answers, Lacey Crisp, Cleveland 19 News.